Oh, there we go. Hello again, and welcome to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. And you are watching the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast here on YouTube. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, so please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Right now my cat's all curled up in her little bed, so I'll let her be. It's kind of chilly outside, I'm about ready to call it a night anyway. But let's talk about some wrestling first. Also, remember, next week, big announcement about the show. Well, enough about my show. Let's talk about the one show everyone wants to hear about. That's SmackDown. This was a weird show. It seemed really promo heavy. A lot of stuff on. Not a lot of matches. But the matches they had, don't get me wrong, they were amazing. They were very good. So let's start off the show. And come, uh, Paige starts to come out and introduces Becky Lynch. She's all healed up. So I guess it was like a nose something. Or I don't know. Well, I always think hockey players heal up after a, a broken orbital bone pretty quickly. I don't know. They just might be hockey players too. Hey, who's your key? Give me beer. Stupid Canadians. But let's, let's, let's go back to wrestling. And enough about my evilness. Um, so we have Becky Lynch giving a promo. And then next we have Evil Charlotte. I don't know which one I like better. I think I like Evil Becky because Evil Becky just looks cute. Evil Charlotte just looks sinister. She had the darker shade of lipstick on. And then, of course, the women, of course, they say they're going to have a table sliders and chairs match. Uh, Mandy Rose comes out. And, and she's getting more speaking parts. She's actually really good at that. And she says, oh, well, no, we should all get a chance. Like, wh why just give Charlotte? She lost. Heal, that makes sense. So, again, the whole woman's locker room comes out. And, and Sonya Vegas, tiny. I thought she was a Leah for a moment because she had, like, like poofy cat ears. Like Leah used to before Leah went heel. Again, from NXT. Again, you can watch some of my videos about NXT. Especially the last time I went to Daytona Beach. Again, I got some pretty good videos of Aaliyah. And I think I remember when she first came out, I think. Jeez, that was, that was a couple years ago. But again, I spent in posterity. All on the, due to the... Magnificent idea of technology. Yes. So but let's get to our first wrestling match. So there's a big, well, well, to cut to the chase, a big smosh. And thank you very much, Simon Miller, for introducing me to that word. And that's the second fun British word I've, I like. Schmoz. That and bodger. Like, anything can bodger. Bodger this. Bodger you. Bodger me. Bodger's a fun word to say. And no one knows what it means. Just like that universal meaning thing. Just cool. I do appreciate that. So we get to our first match of the Usos versus the bar. Uh, they start off with the promo. They have a breakup with a big show. What, what, were you ex what, what else would you expect? But oh my gosh. These two teams are so good. Cesaro. I don't realize Sheamus was that good. Sheamus was always, he always seems so-so. I guess the creative never really worked well with Sheamus until now. I just had to adjust something down there. But, oh. The fact that these two tag teams can do such classic tag team work is really amazing. I mean, Cesaro... God, he's so good. Usos. They were good, but annoying. When they were like the, the fun-loving Usos. Have fun in the paint and came out with face paint. Although they did do the cool haka. You do a haka, you'll, you'll get at least one thumb up from me. But I think that's the only thing they're missing, but they, they, they come out with a little rap. It's okay. But the match itself, amazing. I mean, 
Cesaro shows that he can use that European uppercut from anywhere. In fact, there was one great spot. I think it was the spot of the match where Sheamus was prone after a super after a Samoa drop, I think. The one Uso, I, I get him confused. I'll just I'll say Jimmy Uso or or J. Or, yeah, no, yeah, Jimmy Uso. They both have J in their name. They both have J in their name. I just can't say Jay Uso. Jay Uso. Because one of them's Jay and one's Jimmy. Whichever one, Jimmy Uso goes up, tries the big splash. Oh, Cesaro comes out of nowhere. And I just broke my camera. It doesn't like fast movement. But Cesaro came out of nowhere, hit the European uppercut. Great stuff. And then the other Uso, Jay Uso. Came flying off the top rope and brought his knees up. So again, they, they or, or they countered it, I guess. And oh, it's so fun! I love great tag team work like this. It's such classic tag team action. Therefore, this is a flamingon match. Then the next thing, you have the Miz and the New Day. The <laughs> New Day are so fun. Um, they, they were kind of running the Miz down for his loss of the Jobber guy. And they showed a picture of Kyrie Sane. Is this a tease? New Day, are you teasing me? Is Kyrie Sane going to come to SmackDown? Ooh, Kyrie Sane and Asuka. It's a tag team. Kind of like a revision of the Jumping Bomb Angels. Yes! And I'm old, so I remember who the, jump, the Jumping Bomb Angels are. That'd be cool. I'll have to mention that. Let me get to work to, to El Sicario. The heck's that? That's just a... I eat too much in here. Sorry about that, folks. I don't want my own food up. I thought it was like some bug crawling in there. Then create refuge in my house. Cold. Mm. I have AJ style promo. Oh, AJ is coming from that dark place. Coming from that dark New Japan. Prime AJ Styles. Then you have a really... Oh, during his promo, they were chanting AJ Styles, Daniel sucks. <laughs> that was great. Then, um, I guess, yeah, kind of a match with Shinsuke Nakamura versus Rusev. It's not even really a match. I mean, they didn't start officially. Shinsuke just jumped Rusev and just whooped him. So, I, I guess this is going to lead to a tables, ladders, and chairs match. It will probably be like the pre-show, I guess, for tables, ladders, and chairs. Even though it wasn't a match, it was still fun. I enjoyed it. It shows again Shinsuke's nasty side, his new Ooh. new Japan side. Good. So therefore, I shall give it a rating because it was a semi wrestling match. This was a good cheeseburger showing. By Nakamura. 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 Then you have Jeff Hardy. Um, it was kind of nice. He's been wrestling for 20 years now, and they, they made a little bit bit of a deal about it. The lock, locker room empties. I thought that was a Aaliyah there. And then they had the two of five people there, because I want to say Cedric Alexander like came out too. He was like in the front. Or at least someone wearing his, his clothes. And of course, the crowd chants, thank you, Hardy. Of course, delete, 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 delete. Delete, 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 delete. There we go. 
I think I somewhat caught up with the video now. We'll see though. Editing skill. Um, again, it was a good thing. Samoa Joe comes out, heals it up. Joe's the kind of heel that's going to pick his moments. He's not, he's not going to be goaded into a fight. He's going to fight when he wants to fight. And then you have the next, the next match, Kofi Kingston and The Miz. I was so shocked. I didn't realize they could put on this quality of a match. Both are really getting me. You really do have kind of the same. I guess you have the more technical wrestler, definitely in The Miz, the, the more tactician-like. I know he's he's been referred to by Daniel O'Brien as as the safer wrestler, but very mat based, very wrestling or very technical wrestling oriented though. Kofi Kingston a little bit more on the daredevil side. So it's that fun, good contrast. It's like, wow, this this makes sense. I can see why they're countering each other. I can understand the thought process of how they counter. Wait, is this a real wrestling match? Ooh, mind blown. This is good. This is what Fox wants, too. Hey, Fox is going to get what, what, what it's going to get. And if SmackDown keeps on doing this, it's going to be good stuff on Fox. Again, they both kicked out of their finishers. Miz never hit the skull crushing finale. Miz kicked out of the SOS, which is pretty cool. And Miz starts to take out the New Day. And of course, the crowd's chanting, We want pancakes. I will always address the crowd whenever I talk about wrestling, because again, they're kind of the, a big part of the show. Then you have Randy Orton. Oh, wait, that was a surf and turf match, though. Then you have Randy Orton. Again, he just has a true Rudo turn from like AAA or, or a, a CMLA. Just holds the match of, of the fallen Rey, Rey Mysterio. And then it's a breakout because Rey Mysterio comes out. They start brawling. Um, eventually, Rey makes the mistake of trying to grab a chair. Not going to happen. Randy Orton is a master of the chair. Eventually, he gets... Um, well. Randy Orton, I know, gets hits a draping DDT. Doesn't get the RKO, but starts, I think, just hit Ray right in the, the sternum, right in the, well, chest, with a chair. Again, vicious, vicious Orton with a chair is the best, Randy Orton. Then you have the, the Battle Royal to close out the show. Kind of what you semi expected. And. As the wrestlers came out, Selena Vega is so small. I mean, she looks like a girl among women, a hobo among men. Hmm. Where have I heard that before? And so the Battle Royal, um, I think Carmella came out, had again Carmella, Boo Sonya Deville. Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Mandy Rose, Selena Vega, Lana, Asuka. Why do I think more people came out? Oh, and did I say Lana? Yeah, I said Lana already. Why, why does it seem there are so many people when, like, the women's locker room emptied? And there were more women 205 live thing. I don't know. Well, maybe because well, maybe because Ember Moon was there for the mixed match challenge, which I'll talk about next. But I'm not done with this yet. So again, Selena <laughs> Vega is small. That's a lot to say about that. I think Carmella eliminates her, and Oscar just then. I think the Iconics eliminate Carmella. Then after that, Oscar just eliminates everyone. It was fun. It was. Almost predictable, and it got really predictable at the end when you know it was Boo Sonya Deville versus Asuka. And Sonya Deville's not going to be part of a table, ladders, and chairs match. Not yet. 
I am somewhat warming up to her, though. Again, I met her at the gym, and the only reason I, I knew she was a wrestler is because she had a really obvious tattoo. Again, when you see wrestlers in real life, it's like, who is that? I know that person. I, where did I, I can't. Oh, where did I see them from? And then all of a sudden, they do something, and you're like, that's who it is. I met Sabu, I think, or or, or Terry Bronk. I forget if it was Bronk or Bronk or Bonk. Something like that. In the mall in Valley Creek, Michigan. I'm like, and I saw him. And the only reason I knew who it was is because his whole arm was scarred up. And I'm like, are, are you? And he's like. And I just smiled. And he seemed like the nicest guy in person. Even though his arms were all messed up looking. And that was smacked online. And that was, a, that was again, well, the, the Battle Royale itself, again, was a cheeseburger match. It was fun. And that was SmackDown. It was really weird. I mean, I guess they had their four matches. It just seemed really promo heavy. So I'm going to get a little break. I'll be right back with some Mixed Match Challenge. There we go. Oh, my video finally synced up with me again. It's always nice. So let's talk about some Mixed Match Challenge. So the first match, again, you get the promos. They get the promos and intros. Alicia Fox is just annoying. I have other things to say about Alicia Fox. So just give me a moment. So the team of Maha Alicia come out. That's Alicia Fox and Jinder Mahal and the Singh Brothers. Take on Ember Moon and Kurt Hawkins. And part of me, when I saw that on Raw, I'm like, is Kurt Hawkins going to get his first ever WWE win? Could he? And then I think the announcer started to tease it. It's like, could Kurt Hawkins be number... Oh, wait, no. There we go. I just have to figure this out. 3-0. I forget if that's 3 0 or 0 3. There we go. Now that looks like 0. So again, he could be number 3 0. In the Royal Rumble. Oh my, like, could he? It would be neat. It, and I'll tell you what, it would be something different too. He'd come in at number 30 and be eliminated at number 30. It could happen. And uh, hey, you know what? It would be different. But Alicia Fox, she has a pair of lungs on her. I mean, you can hear her a mile away. I think my cat heard her. And uh, wow, she waxes. Because that bikini trunk thing is getting shorter and lower. All the time, and my girlfriend's not here to say that. But I can say that. And Kurt Hawkins, <laughs> when they came out, he just comes out all happy, he puts his arm right around Ember Moon. Ember Moon's like, "What you doing? I'm gonna bust you in the face unless you get that that hand off my shoulder." Ember Moon is so good. <laughs> Hawkins is so excited to be there again. He could be number thirty. You never know. Look at the, oh, the one of the Singh brothers was wearing a captain's hat, but even Alicia Fox would be jealous of. They're just so well put together. It's fun. Made me feel good. Um, Kurt, although when Alicia Fox tagged in Jinder Mahal, Kurt Hawkins wanted nothing to do with that. He looked absolutely terrified. 
He did get into some offense, though. I was shocked. He actually did pretty good. I think he busted one of the things across the nose with, like, a super kick or something. I mean, that was pretty cool. Again, the things are just there to beat up. Because even Kurt Hawkins can say, I beat up the Bollywood boys. So again, that was pretty that's fun. Again, one of the things, like, you see him and he's like like bleeding like right there or something. So I don't know if he, I don't think he got kicked in the face intentionally, but the way he fell, I think. He just like caught his nose on the barricade funny. It's wrestling, it happened. I took my first bump in a while when I when I jumped from the shelves onto the pillows. That made me feel good. It made me even feel even better when I got up from it. Like, I got up. I can still take a bump. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Ember Moon gets the hot tag from Kurt Hawkins, goes to town on Alicia Fox. Then Hawkins does the dummy thing and blind tags himself in. Right after Ember Moon hit the eclipse on Alicia Fox, and he actually tries to pin Alicia Fox, which in any other wrestling federation would be counted for one, two, three. Not here. Once once he tagged in, that means Jenner came in. And I think that's the one thing they have to tweak a little bit. I mean, with this, you could definitely... This, this is kind of that introduction into intergender wrestling. Some promotions do it great. Don't get me wrong. Pro Wrestling Gorilla does an amazing job of it. Who did a terrible job of it? I forget. There was one promotion where it was bad. Maybe New Japan or FMA, I think. I think it was just cringeworthy again when... Suzuki, Minoru Suzuki just started to lap the, the 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 freaking dye out of Asuka's hair. That just looked vicious. Where else was there? Chikara was pretty good at inter intergender wrestling. Again, a classic match. I forget who the other woman was. It was a uh, Sarah Del Rey and someone <laughs> versus Matt Classic. <laughs> One of my favorites, Darkness Crabtree. Da -da 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 in the Garden of Eden, honey. Like the whole song, which is like, I think it's a I, jeez, I want to say like the full song's like a twenty-minute song. It takes them all twenty minutes. <laughs> get to the ring, or it takes them five minutes. Darkness Crabtree's, again, the character work in, in Chicago is the best. I think maybe the only questionable intergender wrestling probably I'd have to say Combat Zone Wrestling. If not them, XPW. Me, I haven't seen a lot of XBW. Combat Zone, they they do some weird stuff. Where else do I see some weird stuff? Yeah, but that's not intergender though. That's just Japan death matches though. That's a whole other thing. Trust me, just Google women's ex women's Japan death match. YouTube, ooh, oh, that's kind of cool. Again, so Hawkins blindsides himself and tries to press up in Fox. And <clears throat> not happening. Jinder Mahal hits the cloth. And actually in a really fun match, Malisha or, or Mahalisha move on. And again, this was a fun match. This was a surf and turf match. Which means anyone in WWE is actually really capable of doing a surf and turf match if they allow them. Which is what they should allow them to do more often. Water break. And that was a good surf and turf match.
But in the next match, you have country dominance, I guess, or, or dominant country. Bobby Lashley, the Almighty, and Mickey James, who's who's gone full native, versus the Bailey Club. Of course, that's Bailey and Finn Balor. And it was a good match. Um, Mickey James was always that weird character. Like, again, she went full native in her outfit. And it seemed like at one point, like, Mickey James tried to grab Bailey's cooch. And she really reached down there. And it's obvious she wasn't reaching for a boot. It's a little higher than a boot and lower than the midsection. You know where I mean. And it was, it was a good it was a good match. Um and then eventually James tagged out, then it's Lashley versus Finn. And again, you you have Finn, again, so much faster. Bobby Lashley is so much more powerful. Finn's also a little smarter, because again, this is called hubris, folks. Bobby Lashley tried to mock Braun Strowman do the do the run around the ring thing. The run he got back to Finn Balor. Eh -eh. Not happening. He hit him with a sling blade on the outside of the ring. That was pretty good. Um, what's his face? Leo Rush didn't do much. He just kind of like talked it up. Well, Ashley's good though. I mean, he's actually really fast when he started to, to run. And then he tags in Mickey James. Oh no, it was a hot tag. Oh, Mickey James is smart too, because Finn tried to go for the hot tag, and she just pulled her off the ring ring apron. That was fun. Eventually, I think Lashley tags in Mickey James, and before she could get in, because she was posing in front, Bailey actually came out and, and dropped her. So catch as catch can. Um, it was a fun match. The, uh, the Bailey Club won, which is good. It's good to see Finn win something. Maybe Finn could be the thirtieth person in. Bailey number thirty. I don't know. That's the thing, though, because you're like, who's going to be the 30th person in? And you're like, doesn't make sense for, for Bailey to be 30th. I don't know. We'll see. Again, uh, th again, this was a surf and turf quality match. And that was it. That was both SmackDown and the Mixed Match Challenge. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, again, if you do comment or subscribe and I see you because you are public, you get a little special dedication. And again, um, there's a very big announcement coming about the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show coming next week. Stay tuned, folks. Also, I'm going to have a Christmas special and New Year's Eve special. And eventually, I'll have my 100-hour special. Again, I'd like to thank everyone.